Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. I found the coolest thing right here. I've been working on centrifuges for the last two days? Two days. Lots of them. Got a lot of them fixed. But I found a problem that I wasn't expecting, so I figured I'd go ahead and share it with you guys. Well, I want the simple solution to kind of test it out. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is the Stat Spin 4 Express. Okay guys, this is the Stat Spin Express. This is the inside of it. Here is your motor. Uh, this is your power board. This down here is actually your motor driver. And I do believe the CPU is controlled up and under here. The cool thing is, is when you go to run a cycle, this guy right here displays some sort of error code based on what's lit up along with combination of the wrench. That got, it showed me that there is a problem, all right, a big problem. So I pulled the, the bowl out, pulled the rotor out, pulled the skirt out, and now that I'm in here, I wanted to test out the motor. So the error code that I had was a five minute and I believe a 10 minute and the wrench. That said that the motor was unable to maintain speed. Well, based on looking at this right here, you can tell that this is a three phase motor because one, two, three, right here are your three phases that power this motor. You need all three phases, otherwise that motor is not gonna move. So here's what's going on. Since it was a motor error, uh, the first thing I do is I power it up, and, and actually, you can kind of see it right here, the motor is kind of difficult to spin. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the power, and look at this, see how I can spin it really easily? That is because three-phase motors, when they're semi-energized, they are those coils are going to uh, resist a change in the magnetic field, which is why it resists the rotor rotating. Anyway, let's go ahead and plug it back in. There we go, and yep, there it is. It's tough to spin again, I can't spin it. Um, so when you're testing out three-phase motors, given this one is now energized, um, what I was going to do is with it powered down, I was gonna disconnect each of these right here and you connect them and that's how you test them. You basically short out two of the leads together and that will test the coils. So you can tell there's one coil, two coils, three coils, three phases, three different coils inside this motor you with different combinations, you can test that out. Well, I, I came over here expecting to find a paper clip and instead I found a micro switch. And how cool is this? Because it's already got the spade terminals, which is completely in line with what I have down here. So you just connect it to the normally closed or the normally open. Um, normally closed is shorted. Normally open means that you can activate it with your finger like so. Now mind you, this is going to be uh, low voltage, so it's generally safe to do while it's semi-energized, but this, these tests on motors should always be with it de-energized. And one of the things I did realize, is I disconnected my first terminal right here, number green, I went to lift it up, and look what I found. Can you see it? It was barely holding on to the outer insulation I don't know if it's the vibration. I checked the other ones just to be sure. And it's not that they were rubbing on anything. It's just maybe a poor crimp from the factory. Um, it might have crushed the conductors a little bit too much. However, uh, over a period of time, copper, when it's bent back and forth, it work hardens and you will get a flush snappity snap, just like that. So that is the reason. Now you need all three connections in order for that motor to spin because what it's doing is it's changing the magnetic field between this coil and that coil and you're only able to activate one of the three coils by having two wires connected. So that means that it's sending the pulses to the coil and it's expecting a return, see this cable right here, on the motor positioning or motor speed sensor which should be a Hall effect sensor down below and it gives feedback back to the board. All three phase motors have to have some sort of feedback. Either they do it through EMF, through the three channels here, or they do it through a Hall effect sensor like here. But it's not sensing that it's spinning, so it gives the error code beepity beep right here saying that there's a problem with the motor not being able to maintain its speed. So guys, that goes to show you, if you are testing out terminals, go ahead and keep around a micro switch, just like this, kind of useful. I keep them in my tool bag usually, although I packed pretty light because now I'm completely across the country from where I normally operate. Uh, so I kind of packed light. However, I did find one here in the gold mine over here, the stash, and uh, I was gonna test it, but since I found one of the terminals snapped off, there it is, we're good. 
So guys, if it happens to one, it happens to more. Remember, if I have broken wires on my three-phase motor on my Statspin Express 4, if you get a motor unable to turn error, maybe you should check yours. Check it, because even though it might be connected, it has to be able to transmit current to spin the motor. So even though it might have been barely touching, it didn't have the ability to transmit enough current because there wasn't enough conductor fibers there. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something. I know I just did.